let's rebuild a 10,000 horsepower fuel pump. A good friend of mine called and asked if I would rebuild this pump for another team. Being as we're not racing at the moment, I said, hell yeah. Before I got a hold of this thing, this pump was tested, and it tested at 97 gallons at about 8,000 RPM, which is about 4,000 pump speed. Before I even get started on one of these things, the first thing I do is I zero all my indicators, make sure that everything is precise. Then I rip the manifolds off this, the inlet and the outlet manifolds. Once that's done, I take a quick inspection of what this thing looks like inside. I did see a little rust on this one. This team doesn't get out there that much, so I can see where that could happen. This uh, is my setup for holding the fuel pumps. It's an old extension housing, and um, I just put that thing right down there on the old granite plate, and it's really nice, uh, and it holds the pump real well. We'll be going through all four of these sections. It holds a really tight tolerance. We're gonna find out exactly what's wrong with this pump, and we're gonna make it bigger and better. Part two, fuel pump rebuild for a 10,000 horsepower motor. Once I have the pump all taken apart, I do a real good visual inspection. Then I clean up the parts and get them all ready for measuring. You can see this one had some rust on the inside of it. You can really see it here on these end frames. Then I'll measure the components for each section, gears, housing, and end frame. I'll do this with the height mic, and then I'll also do it with a micrometer. End frame clearance on these is really critical. What happens is, is it builds pressure on top of the gears it leaks back down past the side of the gear, that's where the clearance is, and that's when the pump is less than what it's supposed to be. Too tight of a clearance, and you'll mow these gears right into the end plates and ruin these things. Got the first section measured on this thing, and already we have an issue. We've got way too much clearance. We'll get this thing fixed up. Part three on our fuel pump rebuild. So it's time to remove the wear plates off of the housings themselves. And at no surprise, we've got a lot of corrosion. Not just on one, two, but four. This corrosion actually changes the tolerance between the gears and the wear plates. There's also some nicks and stuff like that along the way, so we're gonna have to remove these small dowel pins off these housings so we can sand them. I use this Goodson dowel removing kit. Just a cool little slide hammer that fits whatever size dowels you have. So once I get them out, I'll be able to <laughs> sand these housings down and get all the nicks off of them. That way I can be able to measure these things. So we machine down this inner plate so we can put some larger gears in this thing so we can make this pump bigger. This is how much bigger these gears are gonna be. Everything's measured up. We'll start sticking this thing together tomorrow. So tonight I went to work on this pump again. You know, going back through everything, I found that the shaft, it wasn't equipped with the circlips that it's supposed to have to retain it in the housing even. I replaced all the bearings, the seals, pretty much all the bearing housings were kind of a train wreck also. So I begin the build process. So I've already installed the wear plates and now I've assembled the gears on the shaft, making sure that the gears themselves are actually loose on the shaft. We don't want the shaft influencing the gear one direction or another. After I've measured everything, I know what my clearances are, I go ahead and use these long spacers and tighten down that housing and check and make sure that the clearance is okay and that this thing spins all right. So putting the second stage in, this is where I ran into problems. The wear place for my big gears will not fit the center section housing. So I'm calling it quits tonight. I'm gonna machine these things tomorrow night and we'll get this thing finished up. So last night I got a chance to work back on the fuel pump but my old buddy Brian Cry brought me some master pizza Detroit Rock City it is unbelievable if you have one by you you got to try it so back to the fuel pump last night I couldn't work on it it was my wife's birthday so we all went out to the Texas Roadhouse and had us a big steak and a good old time but I was able to get back on it now when you're talking tenths of a thousands you have to hand sand these end plates now after I put each section together I'll take it off of the holder here and turn each section every time to make sure that there's not an issue. So I finished up the fourth stage of this pump. I gave her a quick spin over and it feels really good. So I put the fuel shutoff cable bracket on it and the inlets. I'm taking her over at 8.30 tomorrow morning and we're going to flow this thing. Stay tuned. Today I'm here at Waterman's in Brownsburg, Indiana. And this is the flow bench that we're going to use today. We start by just running it up, making sure we don't have any issues. 
We fill this pump one half at a time. One will be recirculating in this barrel. The other half goes through the flow meter and returns to the tank underneath the bench. This section of the pump was about 49 and a half gallons at 3,500 pump speed. That calculates out to 7,000 RPM of the motor. We'll do the same thing with the other section. Then we'll pour some pressure on it and see how much flow rate loss we have. After that, took it back to the shop, took the inlets off of it, and gave it a real good visual inspection. Everything looked really good. So threw the inlets back on it, lubed her up, and here are the results. We gained six and a half more gallons with just 300 thousandths more gear. It's good to go.